The following program is a presentation of BaseNet Internet Television, bringing you topics in the way mainstream media won't. BaseNet Internet Television presents As We See It with Fred Boaz and friends. In Los Angeles, I'm Gene White. And now, to our studios in Boston. Thank you, Gene, and thank you, everybody, and welcome to show number 14 of As We See It, being recorded on Sunday. We're back to Sunday, October 23rd, 2011. Joining us in a couple minutes will be Fred Boaz and Holly Hurley. Fred Boaz is from the Pennsylvania studios out there in Swiftwater, Pennsylvania, and Holly Hurley this week is on the road, headed back to St. Louis from Chicago, so Holly will be on the phone with us, so just uh, deal with any audio issues we may have. Before we get started, I just want to thank everybody for uh, listening to our past few shows. Our numbers are way up from where they used to be. Uh, Obviously, uh, people enjoy what they're hearing, and uh, we hope we can keep bringing a good quality product to you. We're we're not getting the comments from everybody, however. We're kind of like flying blind here. Uh, Unless we get some comments from everybody as to what they like or what they don't like, we're just going to keep giving you what we like. (laughs) So, Please uh, send us an email at info at basenetintermedia.com with your suggestions or show topics. If uh, your topic is used, you will also be named executive producer of the show on which your topic is used. Also, you can follow us on social media. On Facebook, we're at Basenet. On Twitter, we are at Basenet TV. So give us your input and let us know what topics you'd like us to discuss or what you like or don't like about the show, and we could tweak it just for you. So without any further ado, from Pennsylvania, I turn it over to Fred Boaz, and somewhere in between Chicago and St. Louis, we have Holly Hurley. Oh, yeah, I'm excited to be with you guys today. It's kind of boring being out here on the road. Welcome back. We missed you on Tuesday. I heard you guys had Jessica, though. I bet that was a real stunner. Oh, it was fabulous. Great she show. Sounds like you. Yeah, we, we had a Holly clone, apparently. <laughs> so, oh, I don't know. She's, she's pretty freaking good. <laughs> uh, so, no, she did, she, she did, a, did, a, she great did job. a fabulous job. And we, we want to thank great. her again. Thanks again, Jess. So, so, anyway. so what do we have today, guys? Well, uh, apparently during the week, uh, we had some animals killed out in, uh, I think it was in, in Ohio. Ohio, yeah. And uh, apparently somebody released uh, some, some zoo animals out into the uh, public. Anyway, Holly, you got more on that than I do. Yeah, you know, apparently this was, I mean, it was pretty devastating. A zookeeper let loose just all the animals in the whole zoo and then proceeded to uh, kill himself. And apparently a number of the animals were killed in the process. They called in Jack Hanna to try to come and get the animals put back in their cages, and they only successfully saved six of the animals. It was, I mean, it was a pretty pretty brutal uh, scenario. Actually. Yeah, it, it actually wasn't a zoo. It was, uh, he was keeping them more or less illegally. Yeah, they had a, an issue. Uh, they were talking about the Wall Street Journal, and they were talking about, uh, cer- you know, a certain percentage of people feel, I mean, obviously it's not okay to keep these animals as pets, which is one of the things that Hannah has advocated against. Uh, in his career, but then on top of that, you know, people were, uh, some people were up in arms about the animals being shot, which I think is devastating that all these animals were killed. I mean, it's not their fault they were being kept illegally, but then, you know, other people are saying, well, these animals are brutal. They want to rip your face off. They're dangerous, you know, um, and I, I thought it was really interesting, you know, that uh, that a newspaper was, was, you know, basically putting this level of opinion out as fact. You know, these are just people talking about their fear of being attacked by animals. And I feel like it's the story in general. We've been getting very little fact and a lot of comedy on the subject. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, well, we, we have a clip uh, from Jack Hanna on the CBS Morning Show with Erica Hill. Uh, just to set up the clip, Jack does explain it. Um, he explains how these animals were illegal and how they were let out and how the sheriff had to make a on-the-spot moment decision to do away with the animals uh, just out of public safety. So let's go to the clip and then we can pick it up from there. 
I want to get you the very latest now on a story that has captured the attention of the nation coming out of Zanesville, Ohio. That's where a man who had a menagerie of wild, exotic animals on his property, more than 50 of them apparently, opened their cages to set them free before taking his own life on Tuesday. A number of those animals, 48 of them, were killed. Uh, and there is a lot of question this morning as to why they were killed, why they could not have been tranquilized, perhaps moved to a zoo. Joining us to help answer some of those questions this morning is Jack Hanna, Director Emeritus of the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. He worked tirelessly with police as they tracked down those animals. And it is obvious Boy. to so many just in watching you over these last couple of days how hard all of this has been on you as an animal lover. It's been the worst thing that's ever happened to me in 40 years of this career, 40 years. But, you know, I, I sat there yesterday when I got there and, at daylight and saw the carnage of the animals. And I go, why couldn't we have tranquilized them? But then when I was with the veterinarians and the sheriff, you, we, only had, we, only had four, we had four tranquilizer guns that got there. Now, once they got there, we're 50 miles away on each side. D darkness was about 45 minutes. So picture about 30 or 40 of them coming out of this whole compound with, with, with four tranquilizer guns. Now, if we even shot one of these animals, like a tiger or a bear, this thing has to hit a certain muscle. They're, they're real good shots, these folks are. But we have 30-something animals coming at, coming at the sheriff, right, with our, with our people. So what can be done with four guns? What you have happen here, once you hit the animal, the animal goes and for three to ten minutes, he's not down. He's just running everywhere because he's nervous. The drug is taking effect. No telling what would have happened if four tranquilizer guns were all we had there and that started with 34 animals. They're huge carnivores. We would have had, there's no doubt in my mind after 30 something years, of 40 something years of doing this, we'd have had some deaths on our hand. Therefore, he had to make the critical decision. Every time I look at it, I know why people around the world are contacting me around England, Australia, all over, are very upset with over this whole thing, the sheriff doing this. He had no choice. We would have had major loss of human life in Zanesville, Ohio yesterday, during the nighttime, especially yesterday morning when the sun came up. The governor now is passing laws immediately. There will be no more animal auctions in the state of Ohio with exotic animals. Within six months of that, we're going to go out here, the people like we saw last night, and those folks better expect to knock on their door. And if they're not up to standards, which are going to be great standards, because I'm going to have something to do with setting those standards, those animals will be taken immediately and taken to the wilds, where we're going to spend several hundreds of thousands of dollars building a repository there mm -hmm. for these animals to have a home in a decent way. Okay, so as you see in the clip there, Holly uh, and Fred, um, you know, Jack explained about how, uh, you know, these law enforcement officers were just outnumbered by the amount of wild animals that could have potentially attacked them or the public, and they only had the four um, tranquilizer guns. So there you go. I and mean, people have to remember that these are wild animals. I mean, these are lions, tigers, bears, and, uh, you know, they're not. You know, they're not your, your average, they're not going to react like your average house cat or your dog. I mean, they are they are wild, and if they get into a situation where they're trapped, they're going to attack. And like Jack says in the clip, it can take up to 20 minutes for these tranquilizers to take effect, and by that time you have four or five people dead. And unfortunately, with the amount of equipment there, the police, the law enforcement people had no choice. And you know, I mean. But I mean, going from, from from what happened, I mean, they're, they, I mean, we get people out there they're making death threats against against Jack Hanna for what he did, which of course has been uh, that's crazy. And as as we see crazy. as and we see crazy. now from this clip, you know, he's he's not for the fact that the animals had to be killed, but under the circumstances, he's certainly good with it. As he said in his clip, he said that uh, he obviously this had to be done because human life is more important than any one of these animals. And here's somebody that's director emeritus of the Columbus Zoo, he also uh, who's said got 40 something years experience in this business, who says that, you know, human life is more important than any of these animals. But an important well, fact he, he said was, he said that tracking the large number of animals through a densely wooded area in neighborhoods with the hope of, of the dart taking direct hit is not a safe option. And that's what they have but, to do. But with again, you know, we're not going to reiterate what he said in the clip, but it takes anywhere from three to ten minutes for the animal to go to sleep after you hit him with the dart as well. So, it, it, well, that's, I'm, you know, go ahead, Holly. Well, and under, I mean, you know, under a preventative standpoint, that's why these laws that they're putting into place are so important because if you are at a zoo or you're in a zoo environment, you know, people who work, uh, you know, my husband worked at a wildlife refuge and, you know, people who work with animals on a regular basis are prepared for these kinds of emergencies. In these situations, they have the right equipment to handle these things. If you have these animals in your backyard and you set them loose, 
you know, the, the police weren't, as they mentioned, you know, were not properly equipped for this because this was not supposed to happen in this area. This right. not and even, this and area. even your even your animal control agencies that are equipped, they're equipped, look in Florida, when a crocodile or alligator, whichever the heck it is, I, I always get the two mixed up. Let's call it an alligator just for conversation's sake. When an alligator come, crawls into your backyard in Florida, um, there are the authorities do have the nets or those uh, harnesses that go around their necks and everything, and they can capture the a alligator. That's one alligator. We're not talking 40 or 50 lions, tigers, black bears. So they, you know, these guys were just outnumbered. They had to do what they had to do. Oh yeah. Well, and actually, well, and actually, my husband was just telling me that the reason that this happened is actually there was the governor had put in an emergency stop for a law that was supposed to go into place to make this illegal. That's why they're now pushing it through is because of this incident. Um, because they, this, it was actually legal for this guy to be doing this. And the reason these things have to be made illegal is for things like what you were talking about as well as a situation like this one. You, you, you know, there is a certain point at which you have to regulate these things to keep them from happening. Okay, most laws have, uh, most states have laws like that as it is anyway. Because, I mean, I in Pennsylvania, we get we get bears and we get... Um, you know, deer, and we do get bobcats and stuff in, in western New Jersey and eastern Pennsylvania, and you have to call animal control, and, you know, even they may not be prepared, but the, the police will, the, the state police and local, they will dispatch them without prejudice. I mean, it's not it's not something they, that they're prepared to handle. No, I and agree. I mean, you know, while we're talking about uh, dead animals, I understand that a pretty important public figure ended up in a butcher shop this week. <laughs> the, the number one dead animal. Who's that? Yeah, and... and Dead animal number one, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, ended up this week. Uh, he he was uh, killed this week, and oh, I, well, I'm that's... actually I'm actually curious about what you guys have read. Uh, what you guys have read about this. Uh, you know, all, all different sides of the point. I, I was reading up on it again this morning. Um, I guess apparently we still don't know if it's you know, quote unquote, almost like friendly fire, whether it was his own people. Um, there's so many disputed explanations as to how it went down the verbal explanations don't match up against any of those cell phone videos that are out there for instance this morning i was reading that they're still sticking by the theory that he crawled out of that sewer pipe and that he was attacked by this mob and that he was uh, seriously injured at the point at that point you know possibly even shot but then he was on his way to the hospital and he died in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Then I read something that said somebody in the, in the ambulance on the way to the hospital shot him fatally in the ambulance itself while they were en route to the hospital with a fatal head wound. Then you watch all of these cell phone videos and when he was attacked by the mob, he was shot several times and almost left for dead right then and there, even long before he was even placed into a ambulance. So I I don't know. Does it matter? I I mean I guess in, in truth it probably doesn't matter. But I think one of the reasons why they're probably hesitant to uh, to identify one of the shooters from these cell phone videos is you know that I think I, I think it's kind of like you said. I think a lot of I think maybe there there are some tracks being covered here at one point or another. Maybe even just uh, by the other rebels. Like, I mean, I don't. I I think it's I think this is a very this is a very intricate. It, it's I think it, when a, a public figure of this size gets murdered, I think, or you know, gets killed, I think that it is. You want to explore all your options. You don't want to jump to any conclusions, or you want to put together every piece. Right. And I guess it, in this case, at least we do have the body. When um, Osama bin Laden allegedly was taken care of and removed from the storyline, I I've been advocating since back then. Show me the body. Well. Apparently, you can't show me the body with the way he was disposed of. Um, so at least in this case, yeah, show me the body. They're showing me the body. We have, there, we there have a body. An autopsy uh, performed and everything. Yeah, I, I don't really care who got him because we don't have to 42 years of, of a person. Yeah, they, they got him. Exactly. You know, it's not important who. The, uh, the important thing is what's, is what do they do now. So, uh, you know, this this follower of ours on Google Plus had just posted a half hour before we came on the air that, uh, okay, Mr. Obama, now you got us into Libya, you removed or you 
we had an influence on removing Gaddafi from power, and now the uh, new government in Libya says that they are going to base their new government on the uh, Muslim uh, Sharia law. Fred? Yeah, well, that's not a surprise to me. I mean, I, they were talking about how these people want a democracy, and it, it, that, that area just doesn't, it, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. They had 42 years of oppression under, under Gaddafi. Now they're going to go into – they have a Muslim interim government that's going to go into Sharia law. That, that's, that, that's almost a given in that area. And, and, and it's they're, they're Muslims anyway. They're not, they're not Christians. And well, that, and that's I, almost I, a given. I, I... I really, I really want to address what you guys are talking about here. You, you said earlier you were talking about Osama bin Laden and show me the body, and then you're like, oh, Mr. Obama, you got us into Libya. I didn't, I, think, I didn't, I, I didn't say that. Our poster said that. Well, you know, he, here's the thing, though, and this is where it's different. Libyan rebels who did not want this guy governing over them killed him. Right. They chose a new government for themselves, which I think anyone here would die, has died, to, to keep that right, to keep our government in our hands. Now, with Osama bin Laden, there, we have, you know, I mean, President Bush was looking for him for years, and I think when you talk about show me the body, you're ignoring some of the social prejudices that we have against war. You know, we would consider it in very poor taste and have considered it in the media when, you know, people in other com com countries have killed American soldiers and have posted those videos and that, and that footage online. We would only be doing the same thing by showing Obama's body around. I mean, you're just, you're just asking for more world difficulties when you get into a situation like that. I understand that people want to see the bodies and all this sort of stuff, but I also really support not putting that sort of stuff out into the world media because it makes us the bad guys. It further villainizes us in the eyes of the rest of the world, and it's a smart move not to do it. Okay, that's, with, that's, you know, with, with that's fine. Gaddafi, that's, that's... I mean, you know, his own people killed him. He, in, all, in all fairness, you know, I mean, he, that, that's, that's their right as his people. Right. No, that's that's just my personal opinion. That is not the opinion of the show, this company, or anything else. I just have a certain amount of distrust of our government to where when somebody is taken out overseas like that by um, our special forces in the middle of the night, and then within a couple of hours, the body is buried at sea, and the government refuses to show photographs that the government insist that they have, um, I'm, I'm entitled to a certain amount of distrust of the government and not believe that uh, Osama bin Laden is even dead. Prove it to me. The government has not proven it to me. Just because the United States government, and I, I am, I'm, I'm not, you know, saying I'm against our government by any way, shape, or means. I'm just speaking my words, uh, you know, as a free citizen here. Um, the government has not proved to me that we indeed got Osama bin Laden. Uh, show me some kind of facts. Don't just tell me. Words, words are words. The idea, like Holly said, though, these people have a right to choose whatever government they want. And what we think doesn't really matter. It's just that, you know, it, 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 I don't know why people would be so surprised about them wanting a Muslim government under Sharia law. That's the way, to, that, that's the way it is over there. Right. That's what I said earlier. They're not Christians. They're Muslims. And the thing is that the, the one thing that did get me is I read an article that uh, Hamid Karzai, the uh, leader of Afghanistan, made a statement that if uh, the United States were to go to war with Pakistan, he's going to back uh, Pakistan. That he would go on their side, which, you know, it doesn't surprise me either. After all, we did for Afghanistan. Yeah, right. Yeah, but you have to understand Afghanistan doesn't really see it that way. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the whole Charlie Wilson storyline that happened many years ago, but we we have a, a pretty a pretty sordid history with Afghanistan. They have very mixed feelings about our being there. So I mean, you know, we see it. Americans see it as a as sort of a not an evangelistic mission, but you know, they see it as a goodwill mission. They see it as them doing something good for Afghanistan. But the truth of the matter is, Afghanistan doesn't want us there. The reason that we got in there in the first place is because we helped them get rid of the Russians, who they also did not want there. And the truth of the matter is, they just want us to get out of their business. That's I mean, it. you know, at the end of the day, if the Af if Afghanistan was sending soldiers over here and occupying, we'd want them to get the heck out. So we're, we don't really care if they're helping us or not. We don't want them telling us what to do. We don't want them to have anything to do with what we're doing. So we're out of Iraq at the end of the year. We're getting out of Libya. We're apparently not going to have too much more to do in Afghanistan. What is next? Is Iran next? Is 
everybody's been saying for quite a while? Or take all that money, take all that money, and all the troops and put them on the borders. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, and I'm with you, Fred. I'm like, bring them home, bring the boys home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I lie, lie, support my friends. Put them on the, put them on the borders. Bring them home. Yeah, put them on the borders, like every other country in the world does. Let soldiers guard our borders. Mm-hmm. Instead of that electrified fence with canes. Well, I mean, if you go anywhere in Europe and you travel between, and you can travel easily between, say, France and Switzerland and Italy, you drive through the border, the gate comes down, and there's a soldier stand, an armed soldier standing there, says, "Man, please see your passport." You show me your passport, and let you throw. It's not a big deal. Right. And just, just like Canada. You know, so it's not a big deal. And we're the only, we're one of the few countries in the world that not have a national police, a national uniform police force like the RCMP right. or in Mexico, the federale. Not that I'm comparing us to Marion, Mexico, or Canada, but mm-hmm. we, 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 we don't have a federal police force that would be doing that kind of job. So let's get the military up there. Well, well listen, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm for, you know, all of that stuff, but the truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, we got a financial crisis here and all over the world. Bring them home and save some money. I mean, we're spending oh, yeah. billions keeping oh, yeah. our soldiers abroad, trying to keep peace in areas that don't want us there. So let's get the heck out and just take the money home, man. Take the money and run. <laughs> like, you know, like you, you were talking about cutting spending in the government. This is a great way to do it. Exactly. All right. So moving along, what's new on the uh, – where are we headed next? To the Michael Jackson front? Yeah. Uh, you know, this will be a quick one, but I just I, – I watched this guy on TV. They pulled in – the prosecution pulled in this anesthesiologist – who showed the whole setup, and apparently it was very damaging in court. They eventually sent the jury out and had him forget about some of the stuff that he said. And apparently he did a, he did a really compelling presentation, and then he leaves the courtroom, and, and apparently in writing to some major uh, news organization called um, Michael Jackson's anesthesiologist a scumbag. And who was That's this not- witness? Yeah, he was an expert witness. I can't remember what his name oh. was, but they, he was a he was a he was a anesthesiologist that was called in by the prosecution. And and I mean, if you watch, you can actually watch the YouTube footage. Almost every major news network covers this of him going over uh, what he thinks killed Michael Jackson, which was he was left on the strip of this medication for hours. And uh, and you can see Michael Jackson's uh, doctor actually getting visibly upset in court, which they're, of course, you know, all the news outlets are saying, oh, it's the first time he showed me emotion. But then this guy who, you know, is hired a professional witness for the prosecution, being paid, walks out of court and says to a news reporter, oh, this guy's a scumbag. <laughs> you don't, you don't do that. You don't yeah, exactly. you know how much those people get paid? It's a waste of money. <laughs> I mean, but you don't. You just don't do that. I mean, right there. I mean, and, and not that you. Not that it has anything to do with his testimony. But I mean, that kind of stuff. I mean, the guy. The, you just need to tell people like him to shut up. I mean, you don't pay a guy to. to it, his opinion doesn't count. His opinion doesn't matter. Whether the guy's a scumbag or not, doesn't matter. Wow. No, I agree. I just, I just thought that. I mean, you know, it's like the whole Michael Jackson thing. His God bless him. His life has been a media circus, and now even in his death, and, it, know, and it's trial, still a media it's... circus. Yeah. And what? Get, what yeah. did? Uh, did, I read something about the judge had a gag order out against the guy too. That they had a judge yep. order, a, a gag, and this guy violated the gag order. Yep. So he should, he should spend some time in jail. So he for should that spend one. some time in jail. Sure. Oh yeah. What else do you have? Well, we had a nice. Uh, well, I didn't really follow it all that well because I'm not watching the World Series this year because the Mets aren't in it. But I'm glad to see that Ted, Texas and St. Louis are playing each other this year. Yep. Well, Saint, I should be following Saint, it. St. Louis is what now, Holly? Up two games to one, correct? They are. They're up two games to one, and I actually, I actually stopped watching last night after about the uh, sixth inning because it was just home run palooza. All of the pitchers were wearing completely through. Everybody was scared because they, everybody just kept knocking them over the fence. It was a huge high-scoring game. I mean, St. Louis ended up winning with over two times the runs of Texas. And, I mean, it just, it just was, it was nuts. I've never seen so much bad fielding from both sides. I felt like I was watching, like, the Little League, not even, like, the Little League World <laughs> Series. It was a Little bad, League you know. game in my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely, and we have we have a clip here. Uh, Pool Hall's of the Cardinals uh, it tied a record for hitting three home runs in the game last night, um, and it was uh, three consecutive home runs, three times at bat, three oh, home man. runs. Here's a little clip from um, from Fox. <laughs> Center 
Jail. Back at the track, he's got another. And more respect. That four hits, two home runs. And he hits me. And here goes one in the left. How about three on the night in a row? Watching Pujols bat last night, I've got to say, was the real highlight. I mean, well, you know, the, the thing about a game that is fielded so poorly like this one is it is such a high-scoring game, and every minute is just huge. But i got to say, you know, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of talk about steroids in, uh, in Major League Baseball. But in, in the case of Pujols, I could almost uh, understand it. I'm not saying that he is, but if he were, because with a name like that, I mean, don't you start shooting up at, like, 12 just to protect yourself? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, who knows? Who knows? But apparently there was a, uh, from what I understand, we had a uh, an earthquake in Turkey this after, uh, yesterday. Yeah, a a pretty, pretty big apparently, right? Yeah, I think 85 people were killed. Oh, okay. So that, that'll take that'll take care of that one. But, there's, you know, things are happening all over the world. Well, we also had one earlier this week up in uh, the Silicon Valley, Berkeley, California, where Jessica Moskowitz is. And it was a day or two after she joined us on our uh, Tuesday show of As We See It. And uh, she gave us some reports online from, uh, from there. Uh, she used some pretty colorful language with the, <laughs> the first one came through. The first one turned out to be a... Um, a 3.9, it was downgraded to. It was supposed to be a 4.2. They downgraded to a 3.9. Oh, it didn't quite make it? Yeah, she used some relatively colorful language to describe that. She's still a wimp. I like to break her chops about uh, this East Coast uh, New Yorker being out in California. And 3.9 she, she, is a roller. She freaked out with that. And then the second one came in an hour or two later, which was a 4.2. And I guess she's getting used to it because she said, okay, well, we just had another one. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it didn't seem to bother as much as the first. Yeah. But ironically, that was centered 30 miles from Berkeley where she's at. Also, uh, oh, wow. on, on Saturday, there was a uh, bridge collapse in India. And it's in, it's in the India's tea-producing region of the Jarling and left 34 people dead. Another 102 people were injured. And, you know, it's a, it's a disaster. It's happening all over the world. And Unfortunately, places like India, they don't have the resources to rebuild this stuff. So hopefully we can get, you know, maybe for the smart, the last gush will go in to rebuild a bridge for them, which would be nice. There you go. Yeah. And instead of uh, worrying about fighting all of these other countries' battles and sticking our nose where it doesn't belong uh, and starting wars in all of these other countries, as Holly had said earlier, uh, go out there and just try to do something, uh, some humanitarian aid. You know, go in there and rebuild a bridge. I mean, that's what that's what we do best. We get the Navy Seabees in there. I mean, I remember that when they were talking about the um, the earthquake or the the, the uh, tsunami that hit uh, Haiti a couple of uh, months back, and they had closed out the airport. And the easiest thing to do is we go in, shut the country down, rebuild the airport, get supplies in there. That's what we do best. I mean, the, the CBs can build anything on anything. Sure. If we're going to spend trillions of dollars, why spend the trillions of dollars on war? Spend, so. spend some of it on this. Yeah. Well, especially in this time, you know, I feel like. The world is becoming so global. I think it's really time that as countries we start embracing that. We start to realize we're we're, you know, we're in this together whether we like it or not. And so, so what else? What else do you have there, Holly? Uh, you know, we'll we'll cut this short. We'll be a little quicker than normal since you're on the road and you're calling in by phone. Um, but what else uh, do you have? You have anything else on your agenda, or uh, are we moving on? Well, I have. I, uh, I noticed, you know, that we, we talked a little bit the, the first and second time I was on about uh, Herman Cain and about the uh, Republican candidate uh, prime, the running that's going on right now. And I know Mitt Romney is still holding down that top spot and seems pretty confident that he's going to beat Herman Cain out. Yeah. Uh, but I also, we talked about the 999 program, and we actually did some research on that this week. And, uh, and it, tur- it, it ends up, it's not actually probably the most effective plan out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It looks like uh, it would increase what the lowest class is paying by probably about three times what they're paying now, and the middle class by about two times. And it would only bring the top one percent, the, the much talked about top one percent, down by something like a like a very 
small fraction of a percentage over what they're or less than what they're paying right now. So it would actually bring their taxes down by a small amount. And then those of us who are jobless right now and hunting and having a hard time, you know, those people are going to be paying three times what they're paying. Exactly. So it's I, maybe not the most effective plan. <laughs> yeah, and if you remember to two shows ago when we had our national political correspondent, Tony Mazzucco, on, that's what you're referring to, that particular discussion, I had mentioned in that show that how this will affect me directly is not so much on the tax rate, on the income tax rate, but on the sales tax. You know, right now in Massachusetts, I guess we're back up to six and a quarter percent or whatever it is. Yeah, because it was like five and then they raised it. Well, let's just say we're at six and a quarter percent in Massachusetts. Under Kane's plan, we'll go up to nine. So now all of a sudden I'm going to pay nine cents on a dollar as opposed to six cents on a dollar. So that's what's going to hurt me the most. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge change. And, you know, I, we always talk about, uh, you know, because I was in Massachusetts for a while there, we always talk about how, you know, they, they really are very, Massachusetts voters are very cognizant of where their tax dollars go and just very aware of these sort of situations. And i got to feel like some of the smarter states in the union are not going to really allow this mm, sort of thing. No, because there are, there are uh, a handful of states that don't have uh, – Income tax, state income tax, uh, Florida, I believe Texas, your old state, um, Nevada. Uh, there's at least so there's at least three or four states that don't have a state income tax, so it's going to affect them. Then you have a handful of states that either don't have a state sales tax or they have a very low state sales tax, so it's certainly going to affect them. So sure, how are how are those states going to jump on the bandwagon? On the you also have to understand that there's also states like New Jersey where a lot of New Yorkers at 8% shop in New Jersey at 7%, at 7% and go to the, 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 uh, the tax-reduced zones where they're 3% or they come here to Pennsylvania where it's 6%. And if it's a national sales tax of, of, 9%. of 9%, it's it's going to affect those businesses as well. It's it's a, uh, But like Tony did say, Herman Cain's not even sure if it's going to work or if it's a viable plan, but it is different and it is something that people are looking into. Right. I got my own I got my own opinions on 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 sales tax, but it's you know it, it's an idea that that it's out there that people are looking at and you have to see what happens. It's an alternative. Something uh, as Holly but, led into this, you know, the economy is where it's at. We need to do something. Okay, so we really should look at all alternatives. You know, okay, I'm kind of shooting down the Kane 999 plan, but okay, it's not that I haven't looked at it. And if somebody could tweak that plan a little bit to make it a little bit more viable, all right, I'm game to look at it again. Uh, the numbers, something maybe needs make to a be done. Nine plan or something like that. You know, the idea of what he's doing, the idea though is good. Sure. Well, you know, uh, the Wall Street Journal yesterday had a top 1% uh, story that was, you know, I, I mean, honestly, I, I got to say, I found it a bit ridiculous. You know, the, the cover was this woman standing in her unfinished 900,000 square foot, 90, it was a 90, 90,000 square foot house. And she said, oh, you know, since since the top 1% have been hit so hard by this economic depression, I can't finish my 90,000 square foot house. Wow. To which you reply, oh, yeah, I feel so bad for you. I feel you so way. bad for you, yeah. 90,000 yeah. square feet, let's see. 90,000 square feet. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. I, 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 well, I feel you know, for her. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'm talking about this with my father-in-law, and one of the things he said is, listen, I hear one side saying, you know, let's, let's, let's increase taxes on the top 1%. And he said, listen, I'd be more than happy to pay more money if I could be convinced that our government will actually do the cutting and spending in the places that they need to do it and not in places like education that we need money. You know, he said, if I'm going to see that money back, if you guys are going to put it into the future of my children, my grandchildren, the roads, you know, things that I think are important for America's future, I'll be happy to pay more money, but you guys have to show me a plan that convinces me that you're going to utilize every cent of this properly. You got it. And they're not doing that. I mean, they're paying people, you know, Social Security disability for things that can be taken care of for a lot less money than they're paying out every month. And I'm not saying that disability isn't important, but I know a guy who's making who's getting six hundred eighty three dollars a month from social security because he's dyslexic, where in New Jersey he can be taught how to read for free. And the state won't send him to the to the program because it's privately funded. And that's yeah, I think I mean I think there's a lot to be done. I think a lot of it and, and I think what gets me so upset, you know, when we talk about all these these political debates is 
I see a government that I I voted for, you know, I mean, and I know a lot of other people did too, with the hope that they would do what was right for us as a country. You know, yes, at the end of the day, we do expect some posturing. We do expect people to do what's best for them. But in the overall, they've got to understand we are literally, as a world, not just our own government, but, you know, as a world, pretty much on the verge of a colossal collapse. I mean, you know, step up. Do your job. Biggest problem. And, and still could. That that possibility is still there because look at the whole uh, look at the whole Greek situation. So exactly. the whole exactly inter what... the whole international monetary fund, and I don't mean the organization, I mean international fund, money yes. uh, is still uh, you know, skating on thin ice here. See, the problem the politicians they forget they work for us and they're they're hired as temporary employees. And that's what they, they, they think they're there forever. They think that they can tell us. And we, you know, people forget we are the boss. We're the ones that control what goes on. We just have to sit there and tell our legislator, this is what we want you to do. If you don't do it, well, you're going to hear we're going to say it with votes. And we're going to vote you out of office. But that's, all, that, that's really all they're concerned about is votes. Okay. 100%, and I think it's become a problem, definitely. Okay, so I guess uh, we've pretty much covered everything we need to. Uh, starting next week, we're going to uh, insert another a new little segment to this show called Holly and the Lobster Tales. We're going oh. to we're going to sort of bring back Holly and the Lobster together, our old show. Larry the Lobster has come up with an idea where he wants to come up with little Cliffy Clavin type things, little known facts that people might not be aware of, and hence the lobster tails, as in T-A-L-E-S. So Ooh. we'll be bringing back Holly and the Lobster Tales for a little, uh, little known fact uh, segment every week, hopefully starting next week. And other than that, look for Viewpoint coming up shortly, our new political show, uh, which I think is... Um, going to be a really exciting and interesting show, and we could kind of get off of politics then in this show and go back uh, into just our general type discussions and move all of this political talk over to Viewpoint. And um, that's about all I have. So I guess next Sunday, Holly will more than likely be back in her St. Louis studios uh, next Sunday, I may be, may or may not be calling you guys from Portland, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, then maybe we'll be getting a call from Portland next week. Wait, what are we going to do, about Portland? Uh, yeah, why not? Hey. <laughs> okay, so that's different. So, so maybe anyway, you'll find something interesting to report on from there. In closing, we really don't have we don't have an obituary. We've already covered that, but just in case anybody cares, which nobody really does, Lindsay Lohan's in the news again. Well, she's always in the news, but she had to make it to a uh, to the uh, L.A. County morgue on Friday for the first day of court ordered community service. And she was late. And she was late. She got there. She was supposed to be there between six and six thirty, and didn't get there on time. Poor Lindsay, 120 hours in the morgue. Yeah, well, you know something. Maybe she should spend a little bit more time in jail. Oh, that's well, in, all, in all fairness, if you'll remember, she also said she wasn't there on time because she couldn't find the entrance. <laughs> yeah, couldn't find it. Yeah, okay. I wasn't going to go there. I'm not going there. <laughs> that's how we see it. From Boston, Massachusetts, I'm Ed Jupin. From Swiftwater, Pennsylvania, I'm Fred Boas. And from somewhere on the road heading back to St. Louis, I'm Holly Hurley-Feather. We'll see you next time. Good night.